Let's go racing here from Millville. And it's Will Hahn again! Dominating the starts this year. Another motorcycle superstore.com whole shot for him. Blake back into the number one, and Martin are right there. And look at this. Ken Roxon, who was your points leader coming into today. Is that him in fifth place right now? I think so. With Moose Cannon Bogle on the 94. There he is. He's just got passed by Bogle. Well, what's great for uh, a rider like Roxon, he would have that parade lap to kind of loosen up and see how he feels on the bike, but he's out there battling. Where is Moto One winner Eli Tomac? Yeah, he's apparently buried right now, so it's Baggett going to try to put the pressure on. He was sixth in Moto One. There he is, right there, middle of your Ooh. screen. Mid pack start for Tomac. A lot of ground to make up. This could shake up the overall, but we're gonna hold off on discussing that and just look at this battle for the lead. Han led a couple laps in moto number one, trying to lead air moto two, but he's got Baggett, Martin, and Muscan down to the inside, makes the pass on Martin, and Roxon's gonna try to get him as well. Roxon gets them both. Let's see, oh, three riders coming into the turn. Roxon gets around the outside. A lot of English there as he was scrubbing that tabletop. It's, it's just amazing what riders like Ken Roxon, uh, his teammate Marvin Muscan, both riding injured. Yep. The ability that you have as a pro athlete, when it's time to do your job, it's like you just shut that off. The pain, you just block it out. You focus, you concentrate on the job, worry about recovery and all that stuff later, and go out there and ride the motorcycle. Blake Baggett, your reigning champion, he's been doing the same thing all season with a broken wrist, right wrist, uh, that he's been trying to uh, recover from. It's good analysis from a guy who once broke his thumb here in practice and then went out and won both motos. Mr. Jeff Hemig. Here is bruised. I, <laughs> I didn't it. even know it. Yeah. Whoa, bagging a big mistake on that finish line jump. Now trying to go back after Han at the beginning of lap two. I mean, Han's a rider that's recovering from an injury also. First week of May, uh, broke his hand, trying to ride himself into shape. The great thing for Han is he is so good off of the starts. It's unbelievable, the starts. He is now ahead in those whole shot standings by a large margin. Roxon up to third, closing in on Baggett. And it's wow. Muscan. I, I'm, I am really impressed. Oh, look at Baggett here. Let's see if he carries this momentum from the outside. Han makes a little mistake. Baggett's got him, and he's into the number one spot. Six to first moto. Now he takes the lead. Uh, this class, even though Tomac won both motos last week, yeah. this class is so competitive. Tomac 10 to the end of lap one. It's shaken up enough where you can't even count out Baggett with a sixth and a first of potentially winning the overall. Oh, and Roxon goes by. He's in the second. What a performance from Ken Roxon. He is battered. He is bruised, but he's not broken. He wants to follow Baggett through the traffic, and he's up to the number two position. And, and when the championship is in play, it, it's it's really amazing as a pro athlete, the things, the, the mindset, and what you will do to achieve that, what you will put your body through. It's pretty awesome seeing Roxon out here. I did not think he would be able to perform at this level. Now it looks like he's catching Baggett. Uh, possibly, I mean, he's going after the Moto win. Yeah. What a rebound that would be. We were just wondering if he could race at all. It is inconceivable that he would potentially win the race or maybe even make some points back up on Tomac, but it's very early. Very you early. see that uh, Geico countdown clock, top of the screen. We have 26 minutes, and then we'll have two laps to go after that. So we'll see how long Roxa can block out the pain. Coming cr uh, across the stripe here, it looks like Tomac has worked his way up to eight. He is now your championship points leader after that win in Moto One, and Roxon's DNF and crash in this very same section. Back and look over his shoulder in the sand whoops. It's good to have some awareness, know know what's going on. But now, now that you know that it's Roxon back there, it's time to really focus on your own ride, uh, concentrate, and try to pull away. Try to put in the best laps you can. Try to hit every mark just perfectly, keep your momentum, get your gear shifts at the perfect time in the RPM range. And you see a deep pack back behind them at fourth through 10th, and somewhere in the middle of that is Tomac. He is eighth. 
and only seven seconds behind Baggett. That's the beauty of this 250 class. The pack is so close. Even if you're outside the top five, you're not completely out of reach of the lead. That's exactly what Tomac was able to take advantage of a Moto 1. Yeah, and the Minnesota fans would be happy to know Jeremy Martin, he's in sixth right now. His older brother, Alex, is running 16th. Ah, oh, but Tomac got him. Tomac has gone around Martin. That'll put him to seventh. Martin back to eighth. Then it's Anderson. So strong in Moto 1 to third. But Tomac trying to go around him. Oh, and I think he's got it once again. That's the same spot that Tomac used to pass Martin to take the lead and eventually the win in Moto 1. I'm interested to see how Jeremy Martin on the Yamaha is going to respond now. If he can, you know, hold on to that pace of Tomac, if that inspires him to pick up the pace. Remember, 21 here, uh, Jason Anderson, he was third in Moto 1. So all three riders that were in the top three are grouped together now in Moto 2. How about Baggett? One moto win so far this year for your defending series champion. He has been fighting through a badly broken right wrist. It's healed. He doesn't have all his range of motion back. He's just trying to get this one done with old-fashioned grit. Two things have changed out here at Millville. First, the clouds have opened and it is raining. And second, Ken Roxon seems to enjoy those weather conditions because the moment the rain started, he closed the gap back up on Blake Baggett and we have got a battle for the lead. And one we did not expect, Ken Roxon, what a performance considering the huge crash earlier today. Yeah, definitely did not expect that. One thing I noticed, Blake Baggett has been pulling tear-offs constantly. Uh, I noticed Ken Roxon, he's using a roll-off system where you'll have upwards of 100 poles uh, of clear film that goes across your goggle. Tear-offs are uh, the complete uh, space of the goggle but you may only have uh, 20, 25 chances uh, to clear your vision. And it seemed like Baggett pulled seven or eight uh, in the midst of that uh, lap final or lap we just completed. And now Roxon's going to try to complete the pass for the lead. And he does. Ken Roxon, unbelievable grit and determination to take the spot from Baggett. As bad as Roxon looked like he was uh, bruised, having trouble breathing after that massive crash in Moto 1, for him to come back and to be in the position, and now to battle and take the lead from the reigning champion. Look at that. Now go. It's just ultimate adrenaline, his desire to be champion. He's a former world motocross champion on a 250. He has not accomplished that championship here in the U.S. in AMA Racing and Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. This is unreal out of Ken Roxon. All right, take us through this, Jeff. All right, so, comes around, just gets a nice line. Now watch the drive he's gonna get right here. Scrubs that double. Doesn't look like Baggett was really, had too much intensity right there to, to fight back. Baggett had been looking back over his shoulder at Roxon uh, constantly to see where he was at. Let's see if Baggett has any response for this. Well, I think Baggett's picked it up. But guess who is now lurking in the number three position? Eli Tomac is up to third. And he might make it a three-rider battle before this one is over. Jason, there's no doubt about it. Right there, the top right of your screen, Eli Tomac, dominant in Moto1, won both motos one week ago. Uh, he is your, your points leader at the moment. He has been so strong lately. This is, uh, is going to be a big moment for both of our championship contenders, along with the reigning champion, who's now in the middle of them. But it's going to be interesting to see what sort of fight Roxon has if Tomac is able to claw himself up to the back of his bike. City event points. Tomac, for the overall, he pretty much has that thing tucked away, but I doubt he cares. He wants to finish in front of Roxon in this race and make up more points. And here he comes, about two seconds faster the last time around than your leaders. Well, back at, at one point had turned to 157. Last lap around, Tomac was fastest with the 158. Let's see as they come by. 158, 159, and Tomac a 158. So now it's three seconds between first and third. Baggett all over rocks, and this battle is not over. I'm not sure what happened to Baggett when the rain started. He had a bad, maybe two laps. He has recovered. 
well, trying to go back after him. Uh, Jason, he's doing what a champion does. I mean, he's got that number one plate for a reason, and he's he's digging deep. He's trying everything he can. Uh, he, the Moto win is right there in front of him, okay? And he knows that there's some urgency to make this happen. Right there, playing the championship spoiler now. Baggett's some 60 points behind Tomac and Roxon in the series. I don't think he's got a shot at defending that number one plate, but he would love to stick his nose in there, steal points, wins, motos from them. Roxon digging deep. Baggett and Tomac doing the same. We've got a great race on our hands at Spring Creek. Battle is on, not just for the lead. That's Ken Roxon of the 94, but Eli Tomac has caught Blake Baggett for second, and once Tomac gets you, the way he's been riding lately, he's awfully tough to stop. Well, he is carrying so much momentum right now, working the Honda left, right, doesn't matter. Oh, look at the drive he's got now. Next to Baggett, Baggett looks over at him. It's a drag race up the hill. Tomac was underneath him, scrubbing those jumps. He goes to the outside, and he's got the second place spot, although Baggett's gonna try to square it up. Can't find the line, Tomac on a roll again. Man, it is so awesome to see a rider ride like with that type of uh, flow right here. Look at this, he over jumps it a little bit but keeps his momentum going. Baggett had the opportunity if he wanted, he could have took him wide, but he didn't. And now we have Tomac trying to see what happened here. This is Baggett. Man, he's lost a bunch of ground. This is the last trip through the whoops. Oh, here we go. This is Roxon, your leader. Tomac has caught him, and Tomac wow. slices his way to the lead. Wow. Takes an inside line. Takes number one, the number one spot from Ken Roxon. That only took half of a lap in the length of time we had the replay of the pass for a second. Tomac was right in front of Roxon. Now you got to give Roxon a little bit of credit. Obviously, he's riding less than 100% after that crash. He's just trying to minimize the damage. He's trying to hang with Tomac here. Time running out in this one. I can point out, see the Geico countdown clock top of the screen. 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your car or motorcycle insurance. We are within 15 minutes of the finish to this one, 11 minutes, and then two laps. And Tomac might have his second straight 1-1. Well, Tomac has, uh, Eli Tomac has always been a rider that has been known for uh, being physically fit. <clears throat> he trains extremely hard, is extremely focused, uh, spends a lot of time uh, working on that, working on his technique, and it shows here. The way that he's riding with the type of intensity, the way that he's working the bike, just manhandling the bike, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of strength to do that. Now it's, it's interesting to see uh, how Ken Roxon will respond, and, and if he can up his intensity, up his game here, because this is championship points between the two of them. It looks like he has. He's trying to hang with Tomac. Tomac, just so strong the last couple of weeks, it's not going to be easy for Roxon to get him back. Now, here's something shocking. Eli Tomac won his first pro race. It was our season opener at Hangtown all the way back in 2010. By virtue of winning that race, he held the points lead going into round two three years ago. And you'll see a shot here of him at that second round that season at Freestone in Texas, running the red plate. He'd actually tied on points of the day with Christoph Porcel, so they both ran the red plate. The heat and humidity at Texas got the Tomac. He had a bad race. He relinquished the points lead to Porcel. He has never had the red plate again until today. It appears he will finally get it back. Three years later, Tomac is going to be the points leader for the second time in his career. He did it in one day, first time around. This time it has taken a long climb. And you see the gap he would leave here with a 27 point lead over Tomac if it ends like this. That's a good day going from one point down, closing in on the championship points lead and then to, to leave 27 points up. He got a little lucky. Ken Roxon had a big mistake through this section right through here in Moto 1. Crashed hard, DNF. But look at Roxon. Yeah. Not letting Tomac go, trying to put the pressure on, because you just never know in the sport of motocross. It, it, so much can happen. And unless you're trying, unless you're out there just giving it everything you have, uh, to be in the, uh, in the place to take advantage of someone else's mistake, uh, then you, you know, just no way to make up those points. But Roxon, outstanding right here also in Moto2.
10 minutes and two laps remain in this one, and Roxon is doing everything he can to keep the heat on Tomac. Wednesday night, the Hunters become the hunted on the NBC Sports Network. Finally, an original show with some teeth. It's the series premiere of Shark Hunters, Wednesday night, 9 Eastern, on the NBC Sports Network. I don't believe there are any sharks there in Spring Creek. At least I sure hope not for the fans that are uh, Rainbow partaking. Rainbow or something, maybe. There's definitely some fishing that goes on in there. Not by sharks, though, I don't think. Here's the shark of the 250 class, Eli Tomac. Two bad starts today, but you knew he was lurking back there. He did his damage. Now we have six minutes and two laps to go in this moto. He has a 4.3 second lead over Ken Roxon. You got to give Roxon credit. Even when Tomac got the lead from him, he hung with him for about four laps. But I think that's all Roxon has. He took a big hit in that yeah. first moto. Maybe that's catching up to him now. Yeah, you got to wonder just how Roxon's body is feeling at this point, especially when he's having trouble breathing, bruised his chest, took a really hard fall. He's only 4.3 seconds off of, of, the, of the lead right now. But the big thing is just the damage in the overall points for the championship. It's been a, a really bad day for him, but a great recovery, even if he finishes in second this moto. Blake Baggett got a couple of laps led in today, but the uh, intensity of the two championship challengers eventually overwhelmed him. He's third. Then it's Muscan here on the number 25 and fourth. He is also dealing with some injuries. Crashed on press day here on Thursday. Yeah. Man, showing off of the cameras. What happened? Muscan would end up second overall. It's a tie between he and Anderson on points. Tiebreaker goes to the better second moto finish. So Anderson is still digging down. He would like, of course, to finish second rather than third. Either way, it would be his first overall podium of the season. And they're pretty close right now in fourth and fifth. So that could change before it's over. Bogle would be next in line. He's sixth. Then it's Han, Martin, Osborne, and Webb rounding out the top ten. Still see a little bit of rain coming down. That's going to... The rider is uh, going through the roll-off system, the tear-offs, quite a bit right now. You really have to conserve those uh, tear-offs uh, if you, you know, you have to have a count, know how much, uh, how many tear-offs you have on your on your goggles, make them last till the end. Got some serious momentum here for Justin Bogle. Couple of fourths last week, fit the Moto One, sixth here in this. Then you saw uh, Han and I believe Martin battling. Yeah, there's Martin in the 77. Here is Han. He had your whole shot in this one again. You can practically show, you just pick a replay from any darn moto you want this year. He's gotten so many of them. Here it is in the second moto today. Yeah, but look at 175 Webb on the outside on the Yamaha. Oh. He, he, he was in there but had nowhere to go, followed by Blake Baggett. He'll be number one on the Kawasaki. That was our uh, 450 start. So you see Stewart getting a bunch of starts today. Uh, on getting a bunch of starts today. They are both your leaders in the Motorcycle Superstore whole shot standings. Han a gigantic lead over everyone else in this. And uh, since Han entered the championship four rounds late due to injury, he told me, of course he's going for the whole shot money. It's one of the few things he has left to shoot for, $25,000. His teammate, Eli Tomac, he has the big prize within his sights now, the championship. He's going to leave here with potentially a 24, or sorry, 27 point lead over Ken Roxon. Although Tomac knows full well, same thing that happened to Roxon in Moto 1, could certainly happen to Tomac over the final six motos of the year, or even late in this one. That's the way motorsports work. Battle here between the rookie teammates since Rulo Hill. That is for 11th and 12th, wheel to wheel. And Hill on the hill is going to make the pass on Cincerillo. And about 10 seconds behind them is their veteran teammate, Martin Davalos. So three Kawasaki's, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Cincerillo comes back. Down on the inside on Hill, makes the pass. So that's 11th again. Yeah, and speaking of brands, Kawasaki has 12 wins here. Suzuki and Honda both tied uh, for second with seventh. Yamaha has three and KTM one overall here in the 250 class at Spring Creek. You know, Yamaha has not won 
How long? The overall in this class since her own Jeff Emig 20 years ago. So happy anniversary, Fro. And we were wondering if Jeremy Martin could maybe deliver today at the second in the first moto as we watch this battle between Cincerillo and Hill. Unfortunately, Martin back in eighth. I don't think the uh, dry spell for Yamaha, this track's going to end. Yeah, this gonna... is unbelievable between the rookie teammates. Yeah, this is a great battle. And you notice they're having to do this as they work their way through traffic. 353 uh, Ham there. I'm sorry, Cam, 23rd. Get some photographers out here. They can handle the poster shoot for next year. Cut back in the amount of photos they need to buy because they're all in the same shot. It looks like Hill has finally secured the position. We're seeing Cerullo here. One minute and two laps left in this moto. Hill locking down 11th. Tomac now a seven and a half second lead over Roxon. Looking for four straight moto wins. Make sure to check out Racer TV's coverage of Grand National Cross Country Racing from Masontown, West Virginia. That's coming up in a couple weeks, August 10th, right here on the NBC Sports Network. That's three hours of racing through the rocks and trees and hills of West Virginia. Condense it down to a 30-minute show here on the NBC Sports Network. Here is Eli Tomac, two to go. Looking for four straight moto wins. Has a nice solid lead over Ken Roxon in this one. Jeff, you said it time and time again, this 250 class, you've even been through it yourself in your own career. The second half of the year, often, one of these young riders finally puts all the puzzle pieces together and starts to go on a charge. Eli Tomek is the candidate to do it this year. Um, it appears uh, to be that way. He's won the last three motos on his way to make it four, making it four straight. Mm -hmm. That's momentum. That's what you have to do to win this championship. I've been really proud here of Ken Roxon. Of course, we've talked about it. This massive crash in Moto One while he was chasing down the leader. Watch this. Comes down behind Wilhan. Front wheel tucks ever so slightly. He gets ejected off. Hits his chest, hits his back, hits his head. Doesn't finish the Moto. Was doubtful if he wouldn't even be able to ride the second Moto. One more look at it. Watch how quick this happens. Watch the handlebars hit him in the chest right here. Whack oh. right there. Right side of the handlebars hit him in the chest. Then he lands on his back. So he's got a front back. Uh, gets up. Was n definitely uh, a bit dazed. At one point was leading Moto2. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so it's going to be disappointing to give up the points in Moto1. It's going to be disappointing uh, to not win this Moto and give up another three points uh, to Tomac. And overall on the day, had a one-point lead coming in, so he's going to give up the points in the championship. But that aside, this Moto2 has been a, a really great ride for him. What a way to rebound on such a, a devastating day. Let's check back in on the hometown kid, Jeremy Martin, 77. We will have a multiple-way tie if Martin can get around Will Hahn and take over seventh. A three-way tie in points for second overall today. Muskan, Anderson, and Martin Muscan has the better second moto finish, and that would be the tiebreaker. So Han and Martin continuing to battle. No changes in the top five. Baggett still third, Muscan and Anderson still battling fourth and fifth. Not quite the same fire out of Martin here in this second moto after finishing second in moto number one. But again, he's a rookie pro. He's going to have many, many more years to try to get the overall victory here at his home track. But today, the man who rode it like it was his own backyard is Eli Tomac. Wow, you, you talk about just having the flow. He works hard at, at his craft here. He trains hard. Uh, Geico Honda definitely has uh, taken that, that top position in this class. Their team has been dominant. Their bikes have been outstanding this year. Riders like Will Hahn Vogel have been great off the start. Uh, Tomac has been able to finish it off and uh, take the wins. These guys are still going at it on the last lap. Hahn and Martin, and Martin tries to hold the whoops. inside. Got it. Wow, that's this hard. Is, this is going to change up the points for the overall. I mean, uh, for the podium, I should say. I think, due to the tiebreaker, Muscan will still have second overall. They'll be all tied on points, but he is running ahead of them in the second moto as a tiebreaker. He made that pass 
right past his house. That's where Martin's house is. Ah, the outside liter of the literally in his backyard. Yes, literally in his backyard. He made the pass. I like that. Okay, Tomac looking to put the finishing touches on another 1-1 day. And a huge gain of points. We talked about it. We showed you the clips. It has been over three years since Tomac has held the points lead in this championship. That doesn't matter as long as you hold it at the end of the year. And he takes a big step toward doing it, winning the overall here at Millville. Going to hold the red plate. Yeah, in a long the time. The red guy, Kohana, going to have the red plate. That'll be the first time Roxon won't have it this year. Roxon won the openers, had the points lead since. Good ride for Jeremy Martin, second in Moto 1, battling to try to get an overall podium. I think he might just get edged out by Muscan and Anderson will crunch the numbers once this one is over. Fans are happy either way, though. He put on a great run, and uh, the Martin brothers, Alex in 16th right now. Alex, by the way, is bouncing back from a concussion. Missed the race of Washugal. I don't think he's quite at 100%. Both of them going to finish solid runs today. Well done for Jeremy Martin at his home track. I know his dad, John, is a former uh, factory rider in the off-road ranks. Going to be happy with his boys' performance today, but nobody happier than the folks on the crew of Eli Tomac, who has today's victory. Spring Creek, it's the Red Bull National, and fans have gathered on the podium. We've just completed our second 250 moto of the day. We're going to show you our Lucas Oil race recap. Great start for Will Hahn. What else is new? Blake Baggett on the number one takes the lead from him. Yeah, watch this momentum from the outside. Bounces over that last one. Reigning champ takes the lead. Then it started to rain, and that seemed to slow Baggett a bit and put a little spring in the step of Ken Roxon, who we were surprised could even race this event after a big crash earlier in the day. Here he is taking the lead. So Roxon out front, Tomac buried in uh, mid-pack off the start, but he was working his way forward. Here, gets up to Roxon in second, just slices to the inside, takes the lead from Roxon. Roxon held on for a while, kept the wheel for a little while, but Tomac was not to be denied. Again, just too fast, too strong down the stretch. Tomac wins his fourth straight moto, second straight race of him sweeping it. Let's give you the results here of his second moto. Baggett hangs on for third. Muscan, Anderson, and Jeremy Martin were having a battle for the podium. Baggett's in that mix as well. We'll straighten that out in just a second. Osborne and Webb end up ninth and tenth. Man, Webb almost had that whole shot that went off the track. Hill wins that battle with Cincerillo, his teammate, for 11th. There's the rest of the top 20. There's Alex Martin. Another home track for his 16th. Let's send it down now to Kelly with our winner. Eli Tomac sweeps the motos here at Millville. And Eli, you will get that red number plate back for the first time since 2010. How sweet does that sound? <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be proud to run it at Unadilla. I think that's our next round. So, uh, man, I can't say how awesome this day was. Other than my starts, just struggled a little bit. But uh, I was having so much fun out there, that didn't even matter because uh, I think this track is really like my track at home. So I was super comfortable all day. Bike was working great. Um, you know, I can't thank my team enough just for the for keeping my bike together and just staying there, uh, you know, behind me, you know, week in, week out. And uh, yeah, what a great day. Four Moda wins in a row. And no matter if you get a good start or a bad start, you seem to finish in commanding fashion. Is this as confident as you've ever been? Yeah, I mean, that's just every time you win a race, confidence just rolls and builds, and uh, that's just part of competition, so you just got to keep it going. We talk about you and Ken. You're both moving up to the 450 class next year. Is there extra motivation to get this title before you move up to the bigger class? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely want to get a 250cc title outdoors, so uh, that's what we're shooting for, and, um, you know, I think we'll have a good shot at it. All right, congratulations, Eli. Well done there for Eli. And uh, he'll try to carry that. Here's the pass for the lead, Jeff. Watch right here. Eli on the gas. Did not hesitate one bit. Takes the lead from Roxon. Only a problem. Tomac are actually going to have a little time off in this series. Most of the industry is going to focus on the amateur finals at Loretta Lynn's next weekend. So Tomac will have to try to carry this through a break. Here is your overall today. Look how close that was. Muscan, Anderson, Martin, Ty for second. The second moto tiebreaker goes to Muscan, and that'll bump Baggett all the way back to fifth. He's one point off of second place. That is close. Roxon salvages ninth overall despite that huge crash. Yeah, and it's not often you get a pair of fourths that give you a second overall. That's <laughs> we'll have to ask Marvin about that. Kelly's down with him.
And another solid day for Marvin Muscan. It's good enough for second overall. Marvin, are you comfortable with where you're at, or do you want to be back up here pushing for Moto wins? No, for sure. I mean, the goal is to win. Uh, it sounds weird to end it up fourth and fourth for second overall, but I mean, I don't care. I, I take it. Uh, it was a really rough day, and I'm so sore right now. I mean, my uh, my uh, buddy from, from the crash on Thursday here uh, at Millville on press day, but. Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, I brought Dr. G, uh, the chiropractor, and, and I mean, you know, I, I tried everything uh, uh, to do and to, to, to get better and to, to, be, to do a, a good race today. And then, uh, I mean, it ended up pretty good. Uh, still good for the championship, too. I mean, I'm standing third. And uh, I mean, I want to thank the team, Rebel Kitchen team, and everybody around me, my wife, and Frankie, my mechanic, Dr. G, and, uh, and everyone in France watching me and supporting me. And uh, thanks, everyone. I know that you're sore recovering from that crash. If you get healthy for the weeks to come, what else do you need to do to be pushing up here uh, with the top guys? Obviously, I mean, I have no excuses because I was, I was with Ken, uh, with Ken and Eli uh, at the beginning of the moto, and they were uh, they were faster, and uh, the track track was really cool, good, but uh, but rough and, and, and physical. But uh, I mean, I tried I tried my best, and uh, uh, I feel like. I was consistent all motto, but uh, obviously I need uh, I need more intensity and a little bit faster to, to, to battle with these guys. And but uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I try my best, and now we have a weekend off. It's pretty. It, it's good for for my body and my my shoulder, and then uh, try to end up the, the championship uh, like like I'm doing uh, on the podium, and then uh, take some rest. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you. Show you the point standings here, the big shakeup. There's Ken Roxon to the right. He's been the points leader all season long until now, and that bad first moto leaves him with a big gap. Muscan makes up a little bit of ground, but he and Baggett are basically going to be title spoilers from here on out. Watch out, Jason Anderson, a good run today, making a run at Zach Osborne for fifth in points. Let's send it down to Kelly with, I'm sure, a very sore Ken Roxon. Yeah, after a big crash in that first moto, Ken Roxon comes out and really impressed everyone in moto two. How deep did you have to dig to get back up there and get on the podium? Well, uh, you know, that first moto, we, I had that big crash and um, was hurting a little bit. I'm definitely going to be sore tomorrow, but uh, had to try to make a good start from, the, from far outside and actually did that and uh, rode up front pretty good. But um, I don't know, I was just feeling tight and... Um, Eli is just, you know, holding out there at the moment, but uh, overall, black weekend for me. Um, you know, I guess I got to make the best out of it. Uh, fans supported me very well, the team and all my sponsors um, supporting me very good. So, uh, you know, I just can't wait to be back home now, work on a few things, and, uh, you know, come back swinging in the next race. I think that's all I can do. Great effort. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah, good news for him. We do have that weekend off. I said that Tomac, that might stop his momentum a little bit. Roxon gets some recovery time. We'll have a highlight show of this coming up in a few days. We won't be back racing live until August the 10th. That's the Built Ford Tough Unadilla National live on Fuel and here on the NBC Sports Network. And then a week after that, we'll be in Salt Lake City for the Built Ford Tough Utah National. Let's send it back down to Kelly. With the hometown boy, Jeremy Martin, a solid day for you. How good does it feel with all these fans out here supporting you? Ah, it's a pretty cool feeling. You know, I've grown up here and everyone, you know, I see a lot of familiar faces out there and I'm just having a great time. Thanks, Jeremy. And Blake Baggett, our defending champion, you led for a while, but it looked like as soon as the rain hit, maybe you were having an issue with visibility or something? Yeah, I, uh, I had to pull all my tear off, so I got a little bit of water in there. But uh, got to give it up to a Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. Just everybody for helping me out. Scott Goggles, Dunlop Tires, Asterix, you know, my mom, my dad, just everybody that's digging deep, and we'll keep plugging away at it. All right, thank you, Blake. And also, Jason Anderson, a fantastic day for this guy. How will you reflect on Millville? Uh, you know, Millville's a sweet track, and it's my first podium outdoors, so um, I couldn't be any happier. I'm just stoked to be up here. Um, my Rockstar Energy racing bike got me up here and um, just waxed it today, so I'm stoked. Congratulations. Lots of competition in the 250 class. As you see, the way the points turned out today for the overall podium, Baggett, Muscan, Anderson, Martin practically tied uh, for second overall. But uh, right now, the star of the show is Eli Tomac. Does the weekend off change anything, you think? Stop that momentum a little bit? Well, uh, no, I don't think it's going to change anything uh, for Eli Tomac. It is going to be good for the riders that are injured and need to recover and need a little bit of time off. For Eli, it's just going to give him extra time to keep building his fitness and his confidence. want to remind you that all these riders are graduates of the uh, Red Bull Amateur National Championship at Loretta Lynn Ranch, and we will have live coverage two hours of that race. 
next Saturday. So even though the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship takes a break, we do not. Myself, Jeff Emmett, Kelly Stavis will be there at 3 p.m. Eastern on NBC. It's part of the Red Bull Signature Series. The all-new Geomax MX-34 is the latest result of Dunlop's ongoing development with the help of top motocross pros. The all-new Geomax MX-34 is the new industry standard for soft to intermediate terrain. Experience the advantage. Ride Dunlop.